Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by a poet that I have definitely not read on this podcast before and one that I am only marginally familiar with. But I wanted to share it with you for a couple of reasons. First, because, well, as you, some of you might know, I'm the editor of our journal here called Forma Journal. And um, we had an email that went out to our subscribers, some subscriber content. We shared five poems that were recommended for autumn by our editors. And one of those poems was uh, recommended by an associate editor of ours called Sean Johnson. He's a good buddy of mine. And I wanted to read the poem that he recommended for a couple of reasons. One, it is a wonderful poem. Um, And two, it's a poem that I think you should hear. And then three, because just this morning, very, very early this morning, um, his wife, Heather, had a little baby, Rosalind. So um, I wanted to read, in honor of Sean and Heather and baby Rosalind, I wanted to read the poem that he recommended for our subscribers. So that poem is called Journey, and it's by a Polish poet whose name that I have a very hard time pronouncing, but I believe it's, it's something to the effect of, I'm, I'm going to give it a try, it's Zbigniew Herbert. Um, it's spelled Z-B-I-G-N-I-E-W, and then it, it looks like Herbert. Uh, for those of you who may want to go, go a-googling, um, you should definitely learn about more about who he was because he was a very important figure in the 20th century. Um, I knew about him more as a figure of the Polish resistance movement during World War II, but he also was a poet and essayist and, and drama writer. He lived from 1924 to 1998. And the poem, as I said, that I'm going to be reading today by uh, Herbert is called A Journey. It's not terribly short. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read it and then I'm actually going to share the two paragraphs worth of thoughts that Sean shared in our, in our post to our subscribers. And then I will uh, read it one more time if, we, if there is time still. This is how it goes. If you set out on a journey, let it be long, a wandering that seems to have no aim, groping your way blindly so you learn the roughness of the earth, not only with your eyes, but by touch, so you can confront the world with your whole skin. Befriend the Greek from Ephesus, the Jew from Alexandria. They will lead you through sleeping bazaars, cities of treaties, hidden entrances. There on an emerald tablet above an extinguishing Athenor are swaying Basileos, Valens, Zosima, Gerar, Philolet. The gold of evaporated wisdom remained through a half-open veil of Isis corridors like mirrors framed by darkness, silent initiations and innocent orgies, through deserted tunnels of myths and religions, you will reach the naked gods without symbols, dead that is immortal in their monstrous shadows. When you come to know, keep your knowledge silent. Learn the world anew like an Ionian philosopher. Taste water and fire, air and earth, because they will remain when everything passes away and the journey will remain, though no longer yours. Then your native land will seem small, a cradle, a boat tied to a branch with your mother's hair. When you mention its name, no one at the campfire will know which mountain it lies behind, what kind of trees it bears, when really it needs so little tenderness. Repeat the funny sounds of its speech before going to sleep. Z, J, C. Smile at the blind icon before sleep, at burdocks at the brook, the brood of chicks. Home has gone. There is a cloud over the world. Discover the insignificance of speech, the royal power of gesture, uselessness of concepts, the purity of vowels with which everything can be expressed, sorrow, joy, rapture, anger. But do not hold anger. Accept everything. What city is this? What bay? What street? River, the rock that grows in the sea does not ask for a name. The earth is like sky, signposts of winds, lights high and low, inscriptions crumbled to dust, memories worn by sand, rain and grass. Names are like music, transparent and with no meaning. Kalambaka, Orkamanos, Kavala, Lavadia. The clock stops, and from now on, hours are black, white, or blue. They absorb the thought that you lose the lines of your face. 
What answer can an eroded inscription give to thistles? Give back the empty saddle with no regret. Give the air back to another. So, if it is to be a journey, let it be long. A true journey from which you do not return. The repetition of the word elementary. Journey, conservation with elements, questions without answer. A pact forced after struggle. Great reconciliation. These are Sean's comments on this poem, which is a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a challenging poem. This is what Sean says. And remember that um, this was sent out as a, as a list of five poems that are great for the autumn season. He writes, quote, I have always found the idea of cozy autumn to be a little suspect. The invention of an age with central heating and seasonal coffees. I grant that harvest can be a time of bounty and festivity, but I still consider the broader season to be one of cold, lengthening darkness and one of longing more than fulfillment. Professionally, I am a teacher. The fall is a disorienting time when the new school year jerks me out of the summer rhythms I have only met recently mastered, and a time when the next lengthy holiday is months away. Ecclesiastically, the autumn is the doldrums of ordinary time when the pilgrim feels he has long since stepped off the edge of the church year. These are the months when I treasure poems like Zbigniew Herbert's Journey that can give expression and hopeful presence to the bewilderment of the season. The poem's speaker begins by instructing the reader setting out on a journey to pray that the road is long, a wandering, that it will acquaint him with the harshness of the world. If undertaken rightly, the poem suggests this will be a journey that estranges the pilgrim from his homeland, makes him one of Isaiah's people wandering in the darkness, but ultimately brings him round at last to a new home where he will see a great light. The poem's closing prayer for the pilgrim is a fitting one for, for our own journey through the twilight of another year. So if there is a journey, pray that it be long, a true journey from which you do not return. A great atonement. End quote. I think the, uh, the translation that I'm using is a little bit different. Um, and, and he uses, he references the word atonement, whereas this translation references uh, reconciliation. Um, it's an interesting word choice. I'll let you contemplate um, that that choice. So you'll note that in the in the version that Sean's referencing there, that translation, he references that what this translator that I read references that as let that journey be long. Sean's translator references pray that it would be long. This translator says reconciliation. Sean's translator says atonement. Uh, those word choices are 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 very interesting. They're, they speak to the complication of of translation, and they're worth thinking about. The version that I'm reading was the only one that I could find online. Actually, it's from a publication called Salmagundi or Sal Salmagundi, um, which was it was published in the winter spring issue of 2015, and it was um, the translator is John Carpenter. Um, I'm finding this online, so um, I was not able to find the the same translation Sean used. But I'll read it one more time, and, and uh, I suppose uh, if you want to do some research, you can hunt down some some of your own versions, perhaps in a, in a book version of it. So here is a journey by Zbigniew Herbert, one more time. If you set out on a journey, let it be long, a wandering that seems to have no aim, groping your way blindly so you learn the roughness of the earth, not only with your eyes, but by touch, so you can confront the world with your whole skin. Befriend the Greek from Ephesus, the Jew from Alexandria. They will lead you through sleeping bazaars, cities of treaties, hidden entrances. There on an emerald tablet above an extinguished Athenor are swaying Basileos, Valen, Zosima, Gebar, Philale. The gold evaporated wisdom remained. Through a half-open veil of Isis corridors like mirrors framed by darkness, Silent initiations and innocent orgies through deserted tunnels of myths and religions, you will reach the naked gods without symbols, dead that is immortal in their monstrous shadows. When you come to know, keep your knowledge silent. Learn the world anew like an Ionian philosopher. Taste water and fire, air and earth, because they will remain when everything else passes away, and the journey will remain, though no longer yours. Then your native land will seem small, cradle, a boat tied to a branch with your mother's hair. When you mention its name, no one at the campfire will know which mountain it lies behind, what kind of trees it bears. 
when really it needs so little tenderness, repeat the funny sounds of its speech before going to sleep. Ze, she, see. Smile at the blind icon before sleep, at burdocks at the brook, the brood of chicks. Home has gone. There is a cloud over the world. Discover the insignificance of speech, the royal power of gesture, uselessness of concepts, the purity of vowels with which everything can be expressed, sorrow, joy, rapture, anger. But do not hold anger. Accept everything. What city is this? What bay? What street? River. The rock that grows in the sea does not ask for a name. The earth is like sky. Signposts of winds, lights high and low, inscriptions crumbled to dust, memories worn by sand, rain, and grass. Names are like music, transparent and with no meaning. Kalambaka, Okamanos, Kavala, Lavadia. The clock stops, and from now on, hours are black, white, or blue. They absorb the thought that you lose the lines of your face. What answer can an eroded inscription give to thistles? Give back the empty saddle with no regret. Give the air back to another. So if it is to be a journey, let it be long, a true journey, from which you do not return. The repetition of the word, the repetition of the world, elementary. The repetition of the world, elementary, journey, conservation with elements, Question without answer, a pact forced after struggle, great reconciliation. This has been The Daily Poem. Congrats to Sean and Heather Johnson. Welcome to the world, baby Rosalind. Thank you for listening. Be back tomorrow with another poem for you.